Good morning and welcome to worship on this, the first Sunday of Lent. And we are trying some things out with microphones and different things, but not for you yet. So uh, John and Zach are here kind of working out the system bugs and trying to figure things out. So we're getting closer to the use of our new equipment, but uh, not for today quite yet. A few announcements. First of all, a welcome. My name is Eric Dull, and I go by pronouns he, him, and his. And I am excited that you are with me in worship today for this Sunday of Lent. Um, worship today, uh, if you did get a Lenten pack, you might want to have your candle and also the bag of sand. And if you wanted to use that bag of sand, you don't have to, but especially for the kids, maybe pour that sand into a little plate. And for our children's sermon today, I'll explain how we are using the sand. Um, also uh, know that um, this is, I'm in front of one of the prayer stations. During this season of Lent, there are five stations that Crystal worked very hard to set up and would love to you, have you use them. We'll introduce one of them each week here, but you can come in and do either one at a time or come in and do them all and take some time in the sanctuary. Just call Linda at the office to sign up for a time so we know you're coming. If evening is the best, um, just let us know that too, and we will actually then either talk to Crystal or myself, and we'll arrange for a time for you to be here and make sure somebody can open it up for you. Um, a few other announcements. Uh, Lenten services continue Wednesdays. Um, you will receive a link, and what I invite you to do as a community to start listening to that at 7 o'clock. It's not going to be via Zoom this time. It'll be through a shared link and ask that you click on that. After the Lenten service, if you want to hang out with me for 15 minutes, we can talk about the service or talk about whatever you like. I will just enter uh, onto Zoom, the same Zoom we use for worship, um, after that service and be waiting. And if anybody would like to, to talk and uh, kind of know, just reflect on the service with me, would love to do that. But again, invite you to do that Wednesday at seven, but for some reason, if you can't be worshiping at seven, know that that link is gonna be good for any time you have time to listen to it, okay? So that's the midweek services. Um, for prayers, I ask that you keep um, Eunice Care in your prayers at the time she, her sister Harriet died this past week. And um, after a bout battle with, with cancer, ask that you keep, um, uh, her sister's family, Harriet Wallen, and you'll hear that in, in your prayers. Also, Dale, uh, um, Dale, Dale Rettman, our, our member, Dale, I hope, I don't know if you're with us today, but he took a little fall, so that took him uh, just out of commission a little bit, but he is back and able to get back to and from, from places again on his feet, but keep Dale in your prayers as well. And Dale, we're sending our warm thoughts your way. Um, other announcements, uh, feel free uh, to leave through chat. Let's see, it is, I forgot to double check if there's Sunday school today. So Crystal, if you can just put through chat if there's Sunday school, because I forgot to double check that and my apologies on that. It is the fourth Sunday here in, nope, it's the third Sunday. So I think there is. Um, any other announcements will be done that way, but we'll take a breath now and then continue with our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock in our Redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. 
rebuild what we have ruined, and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healer and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the refining fire of the Holy Spirit, and the peace of God, which surpasses understanding, be with you all. And also with you. Amen. Got to learn the microphones with the masks here, and we'll figure that out as we go. But this time, I'd like to invite any children that are with us this day to come up nice and close. And um, I want to share a little time together. And if you haven't already done so, or if you have it with you, but if you don't, don't worry. I'm going to go ahead and light a little candle here. And the candle is always a sign of Christ with us. So we light that candle when we worship, and you would have gotten a purple candle. I am in front of some sand here. You see that? The sand. And we have that rusting on our baptismal font. The baptismal font is where many of you were baptized, and some of you will soon be baptized. And the sand reminds us of the wilderness, So we have sand in here to remind us. And if you think of the wilderness, today I want you to think of a desert, okay? Sometimes we are flung out into places that are very dry. So as you are out and we hear a story today um, in our gospel, and the story, and it happens every time on this first Sunday of Lent, the story of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness, Do you know what it is to be tempted? What are things, I wonder, that tempt us? I know for me, if there is pizza out in front of me, I am very tempted by it. And if I have one piece, I'm very tempted to have a second and then a third piece. Another thing that tempts many people is money. Money is tempting because we often think the more we have, the better things are going to be. Well, Jesus goes out and is tempted. And he says some of the same temptations that we would have with food or money or drink. Sometimes when we get very thirsty, we want more and more to drink. Well, in our prayers this time, we have sand. And if you have sand and maybe put it in a little dish, what I'm going to do is just take my finger and I just want to trace it. And as, as I trace my finger through the sand and feel that sand, I want to think about the things that I am tempted by. Maybe I am tempted to have more than I should. Maybe I am tempted sometimes to take money or something that doesn't belong to me. Maybe I'm tempted to do things I know 
that my parents wouldn't be happy with or God that wouldn't be happy with. All of those things are tempting. And we trace those in the sand. And then maybe I smooth it back out to remember that God is with me in that sand, in those temptations. God is with me in all of those places that seem very dry to me. Then maybe we light a candle. Oops, this may or may not work. But we'd light a candle and we put it into the sand and as we say a little prayer, and I invite you to say a prayer with me. Gracious God, be with me in all the things that tempt me. Help me to know that you are with me and that you are with me in all the things that tempt me. When they are not good for me, help me to resist them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming up and being a part of this part of the story. I hope you'll come back again next week and we'll take you through another prayer station that we have here in the church. And guess what? Tell your parents, hey, I want to go to the church and do some of those prayer things because this is good for all ages. So come make an appointment. And maybe I'll see you from a distance. We continue with Bob's reading. The first reading is from Genesis, the ninth chapter. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 25. I will sing the refrain through once and invite you to sing it with me. And then please do sing along with the psalm. And if you want to sing all the verses with me, feel free to do that. The refrain goes like this. Your paths, O oh Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness. Can you sing that with me? Your paths, O oh Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. Your paths, O oh Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let not who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Your paths, O oh Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness. 
lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the god of my salvation in you have i trusted all the day long remember O oh lord your compassion and love for they are from everlasting remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions remember me according to your stead steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness O oh lord you are gracious and upright O oh lord therefore you teach sinners in your way your paths, O oh Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O oh Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. Your paths, O oh Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness. The second reading is from 1 Peter, the third chapter. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you are able as we share the gospel. The holy gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, my beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. This is the first part of a poem by Dylan Thomas that runs through my head when I see people giving up on something or when I need to remind myself not to give up. I don't say the whole poem that Thomas wrote for this dying for his dying father. Instead, just the two refrains that run throughout the poem. 
Do not go gentle into that good night and rage, rage against the dying of the light. Yes, this poem does have something to say about old age and dying, though to me, death isn't our real enemy. To me, the real enemy is succumbing in the wilderness experiences of our life, just simply giving up. Today's gospel and the season of Lent invite us to consider how we handle our wilderness experiences, because we all have them, don't we? So does it feel like the first Sunday of Lent? Welcome to the wilderness. Maybe you're thinking, I can't really remember the last time I was out of the wilderness. It feels like I have been in Lent for a long, long time. If you follow a church, and like most of you do here at United, we follow a three-year lectionary. And each year on the first Sunday in Lent, you'll always get the story of Jesus in the wilderness being tempted by the devil. So welcome to the wilderness. Here in Eugene in late February, I'm noticing it can feel a bit like the wilderness, though Katie and I have remarked often as we've gone through morning walks that the weather here is probably nicer than anywhere we have been before. Even though we have thus far escaped the worst that winter weather has to offer though, we can still wonder when the clouds are going to lift. Lent can seem like a cloud that dampens any warm, hopeful thoughts. Energy, I've noticed, tends to be quite, not quite as high. And just as we can't control the seasons, we can't control when Lent happens. I have heard a number of people tell me lately that they don't like Lent. They don't like Ash Wednesday. They don't like its focus on sin, death, and the devil. They don't like talk of lean times and they don't like the practice of giving up things. I get it. I get it. We long for spring and we don't feel very welcome by the season. Welcome, we think, doesn't happen until Easter. So whether it's in the wilderness season of late winter or in the wilderness experience of our lives, there isn't much welcoming about it. We like to feel good when we come to church and there are enough wilderness experiences in our lives that it doesn't seem like we should have to invent places of sacrifice. So I get why some people don't like Lent, but there is a purpose and it brings me to the practice of giving something up for Lent. I believe it's a huge misinterpretation of giving up things for Lent to think it's about standing against the evils of chocolate or alcohol or self-indulgence and that we can do it ourselves if we just work hard enough and somehow prove how right we are before God. We can resist the temptations in the wilderness ourselves, we think. But let's be honest, the true wilderness experiences of our lives, we never really choose, do we? They come upon us unannounced. And when we enter these times, we're not looking for a welcome sign. We're just looking to get out of them as quickly as possible. We are looking for strength to rage, rage against the dying of the light. It is difficult to feel welcome into places we don't choose. We don't choose the true wilderness experiences of our lives. If we are take today, to take today's gospel from Mark seriously, we can know that Jesus didn't choose his wilderness experience where he is tempted by the devil. In our story, Jesus has just been baptized and yes, possessed by the Holy Spirit. And it's this same spirit that literally drives Jesus out into the wilderness where he's tempted by Satan and spends time with the wild beasts. But also, don't forget that the angels were there also. 
Our calling in Lent is not to stand up against temptation, showing how strong we are, but to open our eyes and stand against the temptation to see in God's seeming silence, God's presence. Because the truth is God is there. The cross tells us that God is especially there in those places of struggle. When everything in life suggests otherwise, God is there. I've been noticing that our prayer list has been expanding lately. The number of prayer requests that come in and things we can be praying for. The people on the list did not choose their wilderness experiences. Maybe it's because we're asking people more what we should be praying for, but it does grow and we realize that we are not in our struggles alone. Some suffer from cancer or the effects of stroke or a terminal illness. I have talked with many people in different particular wilderness experiences, especially those who are facing terminal illnesses. Some have asked that familiar question, why me? What did I do to deserve cancer? What did I do to, to deserve that autoimmune disease? Others have asked, where is God in this? Few of them at first see a welcome sign from God in such experiences. But it is especially in the wilderness that Jesus goes before you. Look for the sign when you are there. If it is a real wilderness, as I said, you didn't choose it, but the welcome sign is there nonetheless. Can you see Jesus holding the sign? No, not because he desired you to go through this, not because he thought suffering would teach you a lesson, not because you deserve this wilderness. We need to only look around to know that wilderness experiences are part of what it is to be human. And truthfully told, you probably don't need Lent to remind you of that fact either. The wilderness experiences of depression, cancer, disease, job loss, addiction, and as we look around the world, persecution, hunger, and violence are all around. We may only see evil welcoming us in those experiences, but the welcome of God is there nonetheless, because Jesus knows we will all find ourselves out there from time to time, driven out there by forces that we don't understand. While you weren't sent there to learn a lesson, there are lessons to be learned when you are there. Dare you ask what God might be up to in those places? Who God might be calling on to help? Where God might be calling us to turn? God is, after all, in the business of taking that which seems only to cause death and somehow prying from those experiences, resurrection life. So when seemingly surrounded by evil, know that God can deliver light. When the wilderness, in the wilderness, when you are in the wilderness, do not go gently. God knows you don't desire to be there. There may not even be any good answers why you are in the wilderness in the first place. But here's the strange thing. This is why we all need Lent. For no temptation, no darkness, no situation 
causes a boundary that God can't cross. And as you rage against the darkness of the wilderness, you will begin to see the light of God is there as well. And when it is your turn to finally go gently into that good night, know that darkness will give way to light, winter will give way to spring, and death will always give way to light and life. Amen. Let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need.
In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world, that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer. Whom do we name at this time? For all those fighting COVID, especially those who live in countries that don't have the medical care that we have. Pray for all suffering from extreme storms and their destruction. Pray for all mental health workers. For my dad as he suffers a stroke. For Patty. My aunt Jan Maxson, who has emergency knee replacement surgery yesterday. For Harriet, diagnosed with cancer. For the family of Rita Malin, who died this morning. Pray for all the people who are dealing with stress related to COVID-19. Hope and strength for my nephew, Tyler. For my sister, Harriet, has four wonderful children. Thank you for praying for them. Healing for mom for Brian, for our struggling democracy. For Dale as he continues to heal, for the family of Carol Gray. For Tony as she faces cancer. For Andrea, hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen, strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We have so much to be thankful for in this life. Help us to live lives of gratitude. For what do we give thanks today? Thanks be for my accident, accident wilderness to show me the light. For teachers. Thanks for the life and music of Chick Korea. Thanks for answered prayer. Thanks for all those who've remained well in the pandem pandemic. Thanks for sunshine. Thanks for the newest addition to our extended family, Lennon James Howe. Thanks for all the doctors and nurses. Thanks for the outdoors. Thanks for vaccines. Thank you for sharing my burden this week. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. We pray especially for the family of Eunice's sister, Harriet Wallen, at the time of her sister's death. Hear us, bring with us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The peace of Jesus be with you all. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace one with another through motions or on chat. Peace to all of you. God's peace, Zach. That's it. God's peace, John. God's peace to you. beside us in desert places and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with jesus christ our savior and lord amen, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give our, our thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right and good that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. You bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal in faith and life and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people, Israel, through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. 
pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be received for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is God, good. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Partake and know that God is with you. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood, may they strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Restoring us, O oh God, the splendor of your 
Before you receive the benediction, I'd like to invite you not only for coffee time following, but 11 o'clock, um, we're going to start a series on calling during a time of exile. And the first, uh, we'll, the first session will be um, just a sort of a brief history of the exile or the diaspora of the Jewish people. And then next week, we're going to talk a little bit about what's known in theological circles as the theodicy question of why in the world does God allow exile? And then thinking about for our personalized pandemics and stuff like that to happen. And so hope you'll join us for some of that if you can, um, but receive now the blessing. God, the creator, strengthen you. May Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit and comforter keep you always in peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hoorah. Hoorah. <laughs>